Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're deploying a Django and React application on Microsoft Azure. This is not the first video in this series, we've already done four before. In the first one I explain the architecture of deployments. Next I show you how to change your Django code so the deployment will actually work correctly. I've showed you how to publish your code to GitHub using Git and we've already deployed our Django code to Microsoft Azure. In the next video, we're also going to focus on the cost of deployment and troubleshooting. But first, we're going to deploy our ReactJS front-end to Microsoft Azure. And if we take a look at the architecture that actually covers the bottom part of the image, we're going to bring our code from GitHub to the Azure Static Web Apps. And we're going to complete our front-end deployment by following five steps. We're going to start by adding environment variables for our backend URLs, because that's what we use to make requests with Axios. Next, we're going to go to Microsoft Azure and we're going to create a static web app so we can deploy our front end code. Once we have connected our React.js code, we're going to check our deployment and see whether everything works the way that we expect. And as a last piece, we need to make a small change to our backend code, because we need to list the front end URL inside of our course allowed origins. Now an important disclaimer before we get started with these environment variables. Um, during the setup of React, I'm using Vite, and Vite has its own specific way to set up environment variables. If you use another package for environment variables, please check the documentation and see how you need to arrange that. The first step that we need to take is adding environment variables so that the base URL of our Axios requests actually requests the right URL. You can see right here in our front end folder in our axios.jsx file that every time that we make an API request, we use a base URL uh, to set up our request. And currently, that is a hard coded value uh, that refers to our Django backend when we are on our local computer because it's the local host 8000. However, when we are going to deploy our code to Microsoft Azure, this link should, of course, be the link of our backend deployment. But when I'm on my local computer, I want the link to be like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file in the highest level of our front end folder. And I'm going to call that .env. And in here, we're going to set two environment variables. And the first environment variable is going to be the local URL. And the second variable is going to be our backend URL. So I'm going to call it feed API base URL local. And this is going to be equal to the value that we currently have specified as the base URL. Because if we are local, then I want to use that particular URL. And I'm also going to create an environment variable called feed API base URL prod. And in here, I want to specify the backend link from Microsoft Azure. And to get the backend URL, we can of course go back to our deployment from the previous video. So I'm going to select my app service. And on the overview page, you can see the URL right here. So you can copy it from there. Or we can just open the website and copy over the value. I'm going to put that as the Vite API base URL prod. Now, what I should mention is that inside of my React application, I use Vite for the setup. And that means that in these environment variables, you always need to start with the prefix of Vite. Otherwise, it will not work. So take that into account. So we've now defined the different URLs for our local code and also our production code inside of an .env file. But now we need to go back to our Axios file right here. And based on whether we are on our local computer or whether we are in the Azure portal, I want to determine what URL to use. And luckily, Vite already provides something that is going to help us with that. Because if you go to the documentation and then to environment variables, you can see that a number of environment variables are created by default using the import.meta.env object. And one of them is the import.meta.env.mode. And this is going to tell us whether we are in development or whether we are in production. And just to quickly show you what the output is going to be, I'm just going to go to my about.jsx page right here because it doesn't really have that much content. 
And I'm just going to put in the environment variable from Beat like this. And I'm just going to say we are in and then the import. And then it should show us that we are in development. So let's start our server and take a look. All right, so I've started my back end server and also the front end server using npm run dev. And when I now go to my application and I click on the about page that you can see that it specifies that we are in and then development. So that means that we can use this environment variable right here to determine whether we are in development or whether we are in production. And we can use that to make the right request with the right base URL. So I'm going to go over to my axios.jss file right here. I'm going to write a conditional statement that's going to determine what the right URL should be. So the first variable that I will define is a constant called is development. This is going to determine whether we are in development or whether we are not. So I'm going to do import.meta.env.mode and then equal to three isn't development. And if it is equal to development, this should return true. And now we can say constant base URL. I'm just going to say base URL2 because we already have the base URL defined here. And we're going to do is development. So it's going to check whether we are in development or not. And if that is the case, then we want to refer to import.meta.env which is the same as before right here. But after that, we're going to refer to the environment variable that we've just created. So in the .env file, I want to see local. So I'm going to copy that over, and I'm going to put that right there. And if it is not the case, then I want to refer to the link from production, which is import.meta.env, and then the string defined for production. So we're going to copy that over and put it right here. And now we can put in the base URL to as the URL. I'm just going to delete the base URL that we had before. And now it should take the right URL based on the imported method at mode. And we can quickly check that inside of our application um, because we can simply click on the home page and see whether our API is still working on our local computer. And when we click on home, it indeed still fetches the right data from our local database. So hopefully this will also work the way that we expect when we go to the Azure portal. Okay, so now it's time for the next step, which is creating the resources for the front end deployment and also connecting our code to that deployment. So go to the Azure portal and log in. And in there, we're going to look for static web apps. You can type that in the top or just select this one on your dashboard. And in there, we're going to click on create. And it's going to ask us for a few parameters. The first one is the resource group. And we're just going to select the same one as previously. The name for our static web app is going to be Django React App front end because that's the same as what we did for the back end. I'm going to select the free plan. For the region, I'm again going to select West Europe because that's the one closest to us. And in deployment details, you have a few options, but we are going to be using GitHub, same as for the back end. And for me, it has already logged me in, but if that is not the case for you, please log into your GitHub account through Azure. Next is going to ask us which repository and branch you want to deploy. And in the organization, I just select the only one I have. And for repository, the same one as we did last time, which is the Django React Deploy tutorial. And for the branch, the main one. Now for the build details, it's going to ask you which um, front end framework you use to create your application. And in our case, that is React. And then it wants to know a few things about your application. So our app location is going to be in frontend. Because if you look at our code, you can see that our main folder, which we've deployed as the GitHub repository, has everything in there. But for our frontend deployment, we just want to have the contents inside of the frontend folder. And that's the reason that I put in frontend right here. 
Now, API location for us is not going to be required because we're going to use our backend deployment to handle all of those requests. And for the output location, you can set this to slash disk. And the reason for that is actually I'm just following the Vite documentation. And in there, it specifies that the build file location is inside of disk. OK, and with that simple configuration done, uh, similarly to our backend deployment, GitHub is going to create a workflow file. It again will be a YAML file, which will be added to our GitHub repository after we click create. And this has all of the details of our deployment. So with all of this information put in, I'm going to click on review plus create. And then on create. And this is going to start our deployment. And once the deployment is complete, it's going to add the YAML file to our GitHub repository and run that pipeline to deploy our code. And our deployment is now complete. And when we go to our GitHub repository, we can again go to the Actions tab. And if we take a look, you can see that two new actions are there. The first one um, is actually triggered because we have done a new commit. And this is actually our backend deployment. So it's going to deploy our backend code again because this is all included together. Every time a new commit happens to our GitHub repository, it's going to redeploy everything. The top one in the actions is actually the one for our frontend. And you can see that it has a number of tasks that it's doing inside of the build and deploy, and then it closes and does a pull request job. So I'm going to wait until this pull workflow has deployed, and then I will be right back with you. Okay, and our front end deployment has now been completed in about two minutes. Our back end deployment is still running, but that's not going to cause any problems because I know that it's already going to work. So let's check out the end results. So back on the Azure portal, I'm going to click go to resource. And again, in the overview tab, similarly to the last video, you will find all of the details of your application. And it will also include the URL. And you can see that it has actually created a very yeah, funny URL. And in this case, we are called Victorious River with a string and then dot Azure static apps dot net. And when we click this, it will spin up our application. And you can see that our application shows correctly. So we have the home page where it's loading the data, the about page where it actually shows the right mode we are in production, and the create page, which will, depending on us having data, also show something. Now, the reason why it keeps on telling us loading data is because we have not whitelisted our front end URL inside of our Force Cloud Origins. And that means that we cannot do any requests to our Django backend currently because we've not whitelisted it. So what we're going to do, we're going to copy over this address on the top of the browser, which is from our frontend. And we're going to go to our code, to our backend, and inside of our backend to our deployment.py. And we're going to comment out the course allowed origins. And in there, we specify the pool link for our frontend. And we also have this in our settings.py file, but in there, we just list down local host in the deployment of PI file and let's remove this trailer slash just to be sure we have the front end URL of our deployment so now it should be whitelisted so now again we need to push this code to github um, because we need to trigger this redeployment and after that redeployment where our front end URL has been whitelisted we should also be able to see all of the database records and creating some records so now we, of course, need to recommit this change. But to do that, we first need to do git pull because a new YAML file has been created inside of the GitHub folder. Uh, so we need to get that back. As you can see that we now have this victorious river one in here as well, which deploys our front end. And now we can commit the changes to GitHub with git add all, git commit dash am, and there we specify changed course about origins and then we do git push to push our code to github now we back once this pipeline has rerun and we can see the results 
Okay, and if I check the workflow runs, both our front-end and back-end have been deployed successfully again, because of course they are kind of interdependent every time we make a commit. So now let's restart our front-end and see whether we can see the data in there. So I'm going to click the URL again, which should bring us to the home page. And again, you can see that it did loading data for a while, but after that it showed us the table. So that means that we now have a good connection to our backend. And also when I click on create, I'm now able to create records. So I'm going to say this is project one with a start date of today and an end date of tomorrow. And I will give it a comment of my comment. Also have the status of open and I've already in our previous video created some project managers in our backend, so that's nice. And let's submit a record. And you can now see that we have that record inside of our application. So our deployment seems to be a success, which is great. And that is actually all for today. In this video, we successfully deployed our front end code to Microsoft Azure. And that actually marks the end of our full deploy process because now our back end and front end are on the Microsoft Azure portal. In the next video, I'm going to tell you all about troubleshooting your deployment and the cost of this deployment because I know that deployments can be extremely hard. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.